Hi friends, thank you for, jo uh, for joining me today. <laughs> what is the joining? That's not a word. For joining me for our cello workout today. So you guys have a unique situation where you sit a lot of the time. Your legs are splayed this way, you hold your instrument in front of you, which everybody thinks is ergonomically correct. And it is to a degree, but you still have some things that you have to deal with. So, what we're going to talk about are some things that you can do right before any kind of performance, before any practice session. What you're going to do, we're going to focus on relaxing what is over tight or overworking and then strengthening what's overworking or over tight. And then we're going to integrate that into a full body movement because the body doesn't work in isolation. Right? So, the first thing I want to do is a chest stretch. If you guys think about how you play, we're up here and we're going forward. If you put your hand right on the front of your chest, your bow arm, do you feel that move? And granted, I'm not a cellist, so I might be doing this incorrectly. But, do you feel this muscle engage right here? Okay, that's a little over tight, possibly, and causing this to be weak. Same with this, because why we're put in this position. It might be passive, but it's a long position. So what we're gonna do is a chest stretch. And it's gonna look like this. What you need is a doorway. And you're gonna take your right arm, put it at 90 degrees in this doorway, right? I want you to squeeze your shoulder blade backwards and downwards, like towards your spine or towards your pocket. Whatever makes you feel more like you, you understand it better, right? So you're gonna pull down and back. You're gonna hold that, so squeeze that shoulder back and down. Let that door jam lock you into place. And then you're gonna twist out into the room. So you might have seen this with physical therapists or physios, depending on where you are, and everybody has a different reason for why they do it. None of them are wrong, necessarily. What you see more is this way, which is a doorway stretch. We're doing more of an active stretch this time. So you're gonna squeeze back and down, hold, twist. I want you to hold this for 30 seconds. At this point of all my talking, we're probably at 20, 25 seconds. It's a long time, okay? And relax. If you didn't feel anything right in here, didn't feel a big stretch, don't do it. If you felt um, yeah, another version you can do, <clears throat> you're gonna bring your arm up slightly higher than 90 degrees. Again, squeeze back and down, twist out. That will get your pec minor, which is down in here. Okay, major is here, minor is here. I want you to do whatever feels most tight, okay? You're gonna hold. You can try this on the left side. Absolutely not a problem. Feel free to pause the video and do that, okay? But you're gonna hold for 30 seconds. Any stretch you do, you wanna hold for 30 seconds. Otherwise, your body stretch reflex will not be overcome and we're gonna relax, okay? From this position, we're gonna do a hip flexor stretch. Why? Because you guys sit all the time. You also have a unique position where your legs splay outwards, right? But what we're gonna focus on are the hip flexors right in here. So what I want you to do is you're gonna put one foot behind you, foot straight. Here's the difference, if you put this foot that is back out about 45 degrees or so, and then make sure your hips are angled forward. Tuck your butt under, squeeze, lean forward. You'll feel a stretch in your pocket area. I call it your pocket muscle. It's your TFL, your tensor fasciolata. That muscle tends to be tight on a lot of people, and this could also be true for you, though we're not gonna focus on it here. It externally rotates the hip. There's a lot of things but you see this, um, you see this, this indentation in the uh, thigh of a lot of people, right? That's your IT band. It inserts down here on the knee. So what you do is if this muscle is tight, that's going to be tighter on some people than others. So if you externally rotate that foot about 45 degrees or so, but you keep the hip straight, tuck under, squeeze, lean forward, you'll feel that. That's not what we're going for today, though I do want you to try it, because if it's tight, 
but only in stretch it. If it's not tight, don't stretch it. That's our rule of thumb. So I want you to take that foot and your, your back foot, this is my right foot, you're gonna turn it straight ahead. I want you to tuck your butt under. This looks like this from the side. You're gonna tuck under. Bend your front knee. Oh, <laughs> so good. Looks like this. You're gonna tuck under, lean straight ahead. You should feel a really nice stretch on the front of your hip. 30 seconds, I want you to hold this, okay? 30 seconds is a long time, so I'm gonna talk you through it, and I'm gonna give you another option you can do if you didn't wanna turn your foot outwards, okay? You're gonna tuck under, squeeze, lean forward. Bring this hand, this is my right leg, bring your right arm up, twist to the rear, and oh, lean to the side. If that feels tight, you might want to look into holding this stretch. If it doesn't, don't do it. That's it, that can hit your psoas, okay? And switch, we're gonna switch sides. So, left leg goes back, the foot is pointed straight ahead. So if you look down at your feet, they should both be pointing straight ahead. Tuck your butt under, squeeze your butt on the left side now, Lean forward, that hip flexor right here in the front of your hip, right where that crease is, should just light up. If you don't feel any kind of a stretch here, don't do it. That's by and large the rule of thumb. If you don't feel a stretch on the stretch that I'm talking about, that means generally the muscle probably doesn't need to be stretched. So don't do it. Don't stretch a muscle that isn't tight. Okay? So squeeze, lean, take this arm up. Rotate to the back, lean over again. We're gonna go for 30 seconds. I'm gonna give you one other stretch that's a little different. So I have a chair here, not that you can see it. <laughs> so we're gonna do, I want you to be able to see this. So you're gonna put your feet about hip width apart. So this is how you would play it, correct? Mm -hmm. you bring this a little bit closer to me. You don't have to see my feet, but you know this posture intimately well. It looks very similar to how you play it, correct? So what you're gonna do is you're gonna put your fingers, thumbs, inwards on your thighs. Fingers out, thumbs in, okay? What I want you to do, we're gonna try this on both sides. Do this on the side that hurts the most, okay? So what you're gonna do is I want you to drive the right shoulder down towards the ground, okay? We're not worried about where your head goes right now. I want you to drive that shoulder towards the ground, okay? Push, and when you feel it stretch, then twist. What you're gonna do is you're gonna hold that, okay? You can try it on the opposite side as well. I guarantee one side is gonna feel more difficult than the less. It's not, it's not just about turning your head. You want to make sure your entire torso turns. So you're going to drive the point. Hi, guys. You're going to drive the point. Your right shoulder is going to drive into the ground towards an imaginary spot on the floor midway between your feet. When you feel a good stretch at the front of your right shoulder, rotate your torso to the left. So it looks like this. Hands are here. Here, rotate, oh, I feel a stretch right here. Do you feel that stretch right in the front of your shoulder? Rotate to the left. It's not about turning your head, it's about rotating your torso to the left. That will give you a really nice stretch through here. We're gonna try it on the left side, okay? Hands here, drive that shoulder to the ground. When you feel a stretch, if you don't feel a stretch, stop. But if you do, drive that torso, I feel it, so rotate it to the left and hold, okay? So, um, you wanna make sure you also, when you do that, you press your chin down, okay? It's not the same as a chin tucked position, which is neutral, so um, you don't wanna let your right elbow come forward, so keep it no further than three inches away from your side, just FYI, all right? So, here we're gonna go on. Speaking of chin tucks, this is another thing we need to do. And I have another exercise I call Jane Fonda. 
I know that's not accurate, but this is what I can think of. Because when I show it to you, you're gonna be like, oh, I know what this is. Think like 1980s workout video. Here we go, y'all. These are your Jane Bond exercises. What all this is really is strengthening your adductors. Your adductors, they add, they come in is what I think of, right? So what I want you to do is put your foot behind you. Bring your top hip forward. If you just do this, yeah, I can do this all day long. I don't feel jack squat. Great, okay, you're not doing the exercise correctly. What you need to do, bring your hip forward, brace yourself. Oh my gosh, that's a lot harder. Keep your knee extended. Make sure you don't bend your knee, okay? That's an exaggeration, but don't do any of this. Lock your knee, bring your top hip forward, and lift up. If you roll backwards, guess what? Your adductors are weak. So we need to actually strengthen these muscles. Why? Think when you play, they're out. Your external rotators are really strong, which is awesome, but we need to bring balance to your internal rotators, which would be your adductors. They bring your knees this way. You are one of the few instruments that actually have this issue. Most people have the opposite issue. Most people, when they squat, their knees bow this in and run. You guys have the opposite issue, okay? So this is one of my favorite ways to do it. So you're gonna bring that top hip forward, lift up, oof, I screwed it up, sorry. Don't do this. If you can do this easily, you're doing it wrong. You should not be able to go far. I want you to come up for two. One, two, hold, down, two. Up, two, oh, that's really hard. So if you can't do it that way, go as slow as you can. As long as you can keep that hip forward, you're aiming for 10. That's hard, okay? You're gonna aim for 10 on this side, okay? And then we're gonna switch sides and do the exact same thing on the opposite side. Remember, keep this hip forward. I'm sorry, this leg goes behind your other leg. So it's not like this, oh, I can do this all day. It's easy. Reevaluate. Something might not be correct. Up, forward, down, slow. If you're rotated backwards, you'll notice this is easy. You shouldn't be able to go very far at all. Up, hold. And up, down, slow. Good. Keeping this hip rotated forward should make this a lot more difficult. Right? Okay. We're going to do about 10 to 15 of these really slowly, okay? Just a couple more. Oh, I'm doing great. Thanks for joining me on this today. I have gotten such great information from cellists who have said, hey, I've dealt with this, I've dealt with this, I've dealt with this. And a lot of it has to do with pelvic stuff. So if you have more information, please keep going, 10 to 15 on each side. If you have more information, by all means, please contact me, let me know. So. We have a couple more and we're done, okay? So what we're gonna do, we're gonna do something called chin tucks. And we just talked about chin tucks, I think. Sorry, might have been a, a video I did a second ago. Chin tucks look like this. You can do them lying flat at your keyboard while you're driving, whatever. What you gonna do? I want you to think like your chin is on rails. You're gonna go straight back like this. You're gonna give yourself the most awesome, disgusting double chin ever. You're doing it right. But you're not gonna just point down and be like, what's that movie? Uh, what's the movie with Will Smith where they do the aliens? You know what I'm talking about? And then, <laughs> never mind, I'm getting, I'm gonna say fresh. Anyway, so it's not like this, which is gross, right? That's just a chicken tuck down. We're not trying to do that, we're trying to bring you Backwards, so looks like this. Pretend like your chin is on rails. You can go straight back, hold, and relax. You can go straight back, hold. So you, des you definitely do get a little bit of a down tuck, but more back. Men in black, that's the word, that's what I was thinking about, men in black. If you've seen the movie, you know what I'm talking about. All right, so down, back, that's a chin tuck. You can do it on the floor, 
we're not going to do today. It's in a couple of my other videos if you want to see other examples. And I actually have another video on my YouTube channel which describes the variations of that. But this is going to be key for you guys because you sit and you end up doing this because you get into your music, which is awesome. But how often do you come back while you're playing? You tend to come forward because you want to be in the music, which we should. But we also need that balance to make sure we can continue being in the music, right? All right, so a couple other things. We have three exercises to go. Here we go. We have glute bridges, and they're eccentric versions. So it looks like this. Bridges, I guarantee you have seen at some point. But this is not your normal bridge. All right, so I want you to tuck your pelvis. You're going to bring your belly button towards your spine. Tuck, squeeze, lift up. That, my friends, is a bridge. Notice my shoulders to my knees are in a straight line. I'm not going over. I'm not doing a weird arch. Nope, I'm tucked under. When I say tuck under, it looks like this. Tuck, squeeze, pull in. Pull in looks like this. Tuck looks like that. Squeeze, lift up. Feel free to pause and redo if you need to. Lift up. Okay, this is a bridge. You're gonna come up and down. If you've never done this before, come up and down 15 times. Here's what you need to know. Your feet are hip width apart. Your feet are straight out. They are not pointed out. They're not pointed in. Your knees are not doing any kind of wonky you know, nonsense. <laughs> they are straight ahead of your hips, okay? So, it might feel a little awkward. Awkward is good when it comes to this stuff. Bring your feet close to your butt because if you feel it in your quads or you feel it in your hamstrings, bring your feet closer to your butt and that will change it out for you. So I want you to bring your belly button in, tuck, squeeze, drive through your heels. I want you to lift your toes for me. You should feel something here. Yes, you might feel something here. That's fine. But if you're tucked under and you're squeezing as hard as you can, you will feel it here. Keep squeezing. Come down, touch, come right back up. Come down, touch, come right back up. We're gonna do this 15 times. This should be easy for you guys. If you find yourself going to one side or another, do 15 of these as is, okay? Squeezing the whole time and trying to keep yourself in line, not shifting to one side or the other. If this is easy, and you have no problem, here's what I want you to do. I want you to squeeze, come up, lift a leg, come back down. Tuck, squeeze, come up, lift, come back down. Okay, if it's easy on one side, we'll try the other side. Tuck, squeeze, come up, lift, come back down, etc. If you find this easy on both sides, here's your progression. You're gonna tuck, lift, one leg, the other leg, come back down. When you do that, try not to let your hips do this business. So squeeze, don't let your hips move. See how they want to do this? Don't let them do it, okay? That is your bridge progression. We're almost done. Your last thing. We have a side lunge to a cobra. I'm sorry, we have two left. Side lunge to a cobra. Cobra, if anybody has a clue why they call it this, please let me know, because I think it's a really dumb name. But side lunge, where I'm gonna have you take a big, you back up. Both feet are pointed straight ahead. Take a big step out. Are your feet still pointing straight ahead? They should be. Now, put your finger in your hip joint and stick your butt to the wall. You'll notice what I didn't do. I didn't do that. I didn't do that. I didn't do any number of weird things. I didn't do that. When you push your finger in that hip joint and you push back, the weight centers from your foot to your midfoot. That's where you want it to be, okay? This leg will go straight. That is a proper side lunge. That's what we're trying to do. You're going to come up into what we call a cobra for whatever reason. You're going to squeeze the bottom of your shoulder blades together. So it's like this. This is the cobra. This is the side lunge. We'll put them together. Cobra. 
Roll your shoulders a couple of times. Nice. Also, are you arching your back? Don't do it. Squeeze your butt. Pull your belly button in. Keep your knees soft. What? I'll show you. Knees soft, belly button in, and squeeze your butt. Roll your shoulders. Nice. Okay, now roll your shoulders one more time. Pull them back and down. Oh, and squeeze the bottom of your shoulder blades together, okay? Squeeze back. That's a cobra. That's what we're doing. So when we do a side lunge, look like this. Side lunge. It's a cobra. Side lunge. It's a cobra. And you can add a balance like I'm doing too. If you want to come down and do a side lunge and come up to a balance, as long as you don't hike, you can keep it here. You're fine. Okay? So we do the opposite way. Lunge to cobra. That's good. Okay? We're going to do again 15 on each side. Here is the only other thing. If you find that this exercise is too much, all you need is a broomstick. And I was a goober and forgot my broomstick today. So, what I'm going to use is a band. And if you don't have a broomstick and all you have is a band, that's fine. Mine has handles, doesn't matter. What I want you to do is roll it around so you don't have any slack, okay? So what you're gonna do, forget the lower body portion of this. If you want to add it, fine, but here's the first portion. You're gonna bring your arms out straight like this, roll those shoulders down, belly button in, squeeze your butt, knees are soft. You should be able to hold this. Pull your elbows back, rotate above, and press up. Here's where it gets weird. <laughs> so if you can do this, would you find yourself hitting your head, or you come down and you have to lift your arms, that means it's not quite the right position for you. So, make sure when you're out here, pull back, your elbows, your arms are parallel to the floor. It's much harder with a band, do it with a dowel rod, you're totally fine. Okay, here, rotate, press. If you want to have more challenge with gravity, all you have to do, and again, this is more ideal with a, um, if you, who has dowel rods? But if you happen to have one, or a, or a broomstick, um, with as much off the opposite end as possible, that's better, okay? You're gonna just like this, rotate, press. Keep that belly button in, rotate, press. No shrugging of the shoulders. The only other thing to remind you is, if, this is easy, and you're like, I've got this, my shoulders are down, I'm parallel to the floor, my back feels amazing, cool. We'll do this with the side lunge, here we go. So we're gonna go like this. Lunge it out, come back, rotate, press. Back down, lunge, here. Okay guys, we could go on all day with this. Thank you so much for joining me today, and, um, yeah, I'm looking forward to talking to you again soon. The next exercise is going to be with equipment. So I look forward to your feedback. Please let me know how this worked out for you and how it affects your playing. Thanks again. Bye.